Walking the streets of Chinese cities in the 80s, spawning a car would have been a rare sight. Other than diplomatic limousines and government vehicles, most commuting was done using bicycles and buses. In 1985, with a population of over a billion people, China produced a total of 5,800 automobiles and imported a total of 350,000 models from Japan and the Soviet Union. Fast forward to 2017, the year the car industry peaked, China produced 28 million cars, manufacturing more vehicles than the next four biggest producers combined. Despite the impressive numbers, Chinese cars have failed to take off around the world. Even most of the vehicles sold domestically, like Volkswagens or Toyotas, are foreign, yet still manufactured in China. Today, the industry is at the dawn of a massive transition towards fleets of electric and autonomous vehicles roaming the roads of the world faster, safer, and cheaper than ever before. As part of this transition, tens of Chinese companies with global ambitions and deep pockets have emerged, able to learn from companies like Tesla and willing to take on legacy companies to bring about a revolution in the industry. Already the biggest electric vehicle market, China is destined to shape the automotive future of the world. In this video, we'll look at how China's car industry got here, what role they play in the coming automotive revolution, and how this will impact the rest of the world. The birth of the Chinese car. For a long time in communist China, the belief that private cars were for the bourgeoisie prevented any growth in the industry. Streets were filled with bicycles, and low quality trucks and buses were pretty much all that you could expect in terms of motor vehicles. Following Deng Xiaoping's economic reform, China, desperate for growth and industrial development, sought to fill its carless streets, which by then were being considered backwards. Joint ventures were created with several foreign manufacturers to kickstart the country's automotive industry by manufacturing and assembling foreign models inside China. The main goal, of course, was to acquire the necessary technology to make the Chinese car a reality. The results, however, were less than ideal. Inexperienced workers, most of whom had never even been in a car before, happened to manufacture extremely faulty vehicles. It took decades of trial and error and some extensive knowledge transfer. But by the late 2000s, China was already above Germany, Japan and the US as the dominant car producer in the world. The progress was remarkable, if not shocking. But even after all these efforts, after hundreds of car factories and billions of dollars invested, a truly Chinese car remained a distant dream. Foreign models still made up 85% of manufactured vehicles. China openly copied foreign vehicles, of course. Even models already manufactured in China through joint ventures had to compete with their near identical Chinese clones, although the build quality was much lower. And even as the largest car producers around, the Chinese never quite mastered internal combustion engine vehicles. A combination of inferior engineering and inefficient supply chains stopped China from ever producing ICE motors that could compete with their Japanese or German rivals. In fact, according to Freeman Shen, founder of WM, one of China's leading electric car manufacturers, you would have to invest billions of dollars for another 20 years and maybe then you would be getting close to the Germans. But low quality vehicles and reliance on foreign partnerships isn't the main concern of the Chinese Communist Party. The race to the top has come with its own dangerous compromises. Chinese cities are infamous for their signature smog, an environmental disaster and a public health crisis that claims the lives of around 1.6 million people per year and leads to the illness of tens of millions more. Overall, a colossal national embarrassment for a regime obsessed with its image. If human harm isn't enough, China's consumption of fossil fuels is also an economic burden. As the world's biggest oil importer, it imports around 8.4 million barrels a day. Combined with its own production of 4.8 million barrels, it consumes more oil than Saudi Arabia's total production. Consumption is expected to reach 17.5 million barrels a day by 2030, surpassing the United States' current oil production. Having promised to cap its carbon emissions by 2030 and become carbon neutral by 2060, the Communist Party has more than enough incentive to battle its addiction to fossil fuels. The Electric Revolution with Chinese Characteristics In September 2017, during an automotive conference, 
China's Vice Minister of Industry and IT announced the party's plan to phase out internal combustion engine vehicles, a long-term goal that has sent a clear message to the entire industry that change is inevitable. While many multinational legacy car companies are still resisting the idea of going all in with electric, Chinese companies have neither the proud engineering culture with decades of history nor the hundreds of billions of dollars of sunken cost in their ICE assembly lines and supply chain. Electrifying China's roads will certainly help thin out the lethal smog from their cities and reduce the nation's dependence on foreign oil. It would also help accelerate innovation in battery technology that would make solar-powered grids viable. Of course, as pretty as it all sounds, the electric dream is still distant. Over the past few years, fed up with a lack of innovation in Chinese electric cars and pressured from the top to render China into the world's top EV market, the industry has opened up to tech entrepreneurs, from Shenzhen to Silicon Valley, to help the Chinese electric dream come true. The pressure from Beijing is intense. So aggressive, in fact, that in order to pump up the numbers, companies were pressured to fake over half of their EV sales in 2015. As an incentive to increase production, companies receive tradable credits for manufacturing electric, hybrid, or fuel cell-powered vehicles. As of 2020, all companies must buy or earn new energy vehicle credits equivalent to 12% of their fossil fuel-powered production. They even try to make it mandatory for all foreign joint ventures to create another joint venture purely to manufacture electric cars. A massive series of deals that have so far failed to actually become reality. BYD, which made China's first electric car, released to the public in 2011, is still the major EV producer in China. But competition is heating up, as many Chinese internet giants, including Tencent, Baidu and Alibaba, have invested in EV manufacturers like Faraday Future, Karma, and many more firms developing and selling electric cars in China, the US, and elsewhere. Even 5% of Tesla is now owned by Tencent. Improving EV technology is so important to the party, they even allowed Tesla to become the first car company to build a fully foreign-owned factory in China and hire Chinese engineers to manufacture and design cars locally. The demand side is slowly catching up. Just like European and American consumers, the Chinese are also overcoming the famous EV range anxiety. Many thanks to the fact that China's charging stations continue to double just about every year. Buyers are incentivized to go electric through generous subsidies and tax exemptions. In large cities like Beijing or Shanghai, you basically don't have an option. The only chance you have to register a new license plate is by going electric. The electric revolution is happening, and China really wants to be the leader of this industry rebirth. Building the future of an industry in decline. In 2017, the world manufactured 97.5 million automobiles, a number that has continued to decline ever since and is now experiencing a freefall. It's highly unlikely that production will ever go back to pre-pandemic levels. Around the world, personal vehicles are slowly becoming unnecessary, whilst ride-sharing services have taken over the daily commute of hundreds of millions of people all around the globe. As far as the future of the industry is concerned, autonomous vehicles are just as hot as electric ones. Robotaxis will soon make owning and driving a car redundant. While Tesla and Waymo seem to be leading the industry with their massive datasets and will likely enable the autonomous revolution in the West, authoritarian China is most likely where the real autonomous fleets will be born. Chinese firms are open-handed and are granted all the resources they need by the CCP. Several areas in Beijing and other Chinese cities have already been designated to AV testing. These so-called national testing roads are already filled with cars from several tech companies. While American companies have all the funding they need, Chinese ones have the option of creating infrastructure that would be implemented nationwide with government funding. Everything from sensors built into roads to guide autonomous vehicles to sophisticated 5G equipment. They've actually gone as far as rewriting traffic laws to define the relationship between pedestrians and self-driving cars to reduce the liability of AV companies. Thanks to these massive investments and protection from foreign competition, China's self-driving and interconnected vehicle market is growing at breakneck speed and could surpass $2 trillion over the next 20 years, according to McKinsey. 
Already, simple tasks such as street sweeping are being automated all over China, paving the path for the autonomous market to grow over time with consistent cash flow. But that's not where it all ends. At the end of the day, the future of the auto industry lies not in the hands of those who can manufacture the most diverse models, but those who manage to commoditize the battery packs that power electric vehicles or the software and hardware that bring the autonomous car to life. This is the dream that seems to justify Tesla's $420 plus billion dollar valuation. But just like Tesla plans to help accelerate humanity's transition to sustainable energy by advancing and commoditizing the battery packs that fuel electric cars and store energy for the grid, China, already a battery manufacturing behemoth, aims to dominate the industry just as it already does with solar panels. It's very likely that only a few decades from now, the industry will be dominated by a handful of giants who manufacture battery packs or autonomous vehicle equipment and then sell them to smaller companies who add their own body and branding to those systems. Welcome to the 21st century automotive revolution, mostly with Chinese characteristics. Conclusions In only a few decades, China has come a long way. It's been transformed from a carless society to the world's dominant vehicle market. Now, it must deal with the environmental, social, and economic consequences. But the auto industry is changing very quickly. Personal cars are not a personal issue anymore, and the industry as a whole is in decline. China, as the world's largest car manufacturer and market, is the perfect hub for a revolution to take place a world of autonomous electric cars roaming the streets of the world. Moreover, the world is at the dawn of a massive energy transition. Electric vehicles happen to be a great stepping stone for it. China has more than enough reason to lead the world through this transition and beat its competitors in the new race for the world's new energy giants.